Hi, and welcome to another video. So this will be like the third one this week. It must be going nuts. Uh, obviously, as you can tell, I've been on holiday from work, uh, and I've used that time to um, spend it with the family. But it's good for you guys. Uh, I want to teach you some more stuff. And uh, today, I want to show you how to create your first user interface or your menu for your game in Unity. Uh, and let's get stuck in. Okay, so here we are. This is what we're going to be making. Um, it's just a very simple UI, got a title across the top, uh, an image in the background and then two buttons. This is how it looks. So you can hover over the buttons and it goes red. You know, run away or exit it doesn't work at the moment in the editor, but you can click play and it loads a brand new level, which is just an empty scene at the moment. Um, so what I'm going to do now is going to show you how to get started with this. Uh, and what we'll do is we'll, um, we'll create a brand new scene and we'll start from scratch. So, here we go. File, new scene. And um, we've got a bit of like housekeeping, I suppose you could call it, to do. We want to set our game up to work in HD. And to do that, if we go to this bit here, it says Dan's Res, or it might say Free Aspect on yours. And we're going to add a new resolution in, in case you haven't got it before. So click on the plus button at the bottom and just give it a name. I'll call mine something imaginative, like blah blah. And then add a width and a height. I'll go 1920 by 1080. And then now that gives my game in the play in the editor um, a HD resolution. But I've already got it already, so I'm just going to use one I made earlier. Now, if we go back to our scene view, and what we'll do is we'll create a new canvas. So we'll go down to UI, and then select canvas. And this is going to bring in uh, just like a, a blank canvas uh, it's automatically set to screen space overlay we'll leave it on that for this tutorial and uh, we'll change the canvas scaler to scale with screen size so when um, if you're using a different resolution our UI will automatically scale down and you can set the reference resolution to 1920 by 1080 um, and this is just what we've set ours to work at at the moment so next we want to go in and we'll add in our image so go and go UI and an image, and then it'll bring in this um, uh, like a, a section here we can add our image onto. Uh, and you can see here I've already loaded in an, a texture, and I've set it the texture type to Sprite 2D and UI. Um, this will allow it to work with the UI. And what we'll do is we'll click and we'll drag that, and we'll put it into our source image box. And as you can see there, it's come in, but it's tiny. So we need to change the width and the height to 1920 by 1080. Now it will be full screen in our canvas and also full screen in the game when we run it as well. Uh, um, so if we play it, you'll see here that it will be full screen, which is cool, it's exactly what we want. So what we'll do now is if we'll go ahead and we'll add a title, so UI text, uh, it pops in in the middle. What we'll do here is we'll change the text title, we'll give it something, we'll call it The Haunted. And we will change the font size, you can do all, all your normal text editing bits and pieces, we can align it to the center, horizontally and vertically. We can also change its color so we can see it, let's change it to white. And if we now position it in the top left, we'll leave our anchor point in the center for the sake of this tutorial. And what we'll do now is we'll also make it a bit bigger so we can read it and then we'll use our um, gizmo to just change the size of it here. Change, change the size of the text box and we can also crank up the size of the um, font. Now that font is Arial and it's a kind of a bit boring. I've brought in my own font, Necrotype here. Uh, and that's just dragging it out of my fonts folder in Windows. And you, all you've got to do is click and drag it into the font and it automatically updates it. So that's pretty cool. That's like a top tip right there. Uh, so now I've gonna, we're now we're going to add in the buttons. And um, to do that, select your canvas, right click, go UI. My mind's just gone blank. Oh, the UI, and we'll go button. Here we go. So here's our button. We'll position that. We'll leave our anchor point alone for a minute, and uh, we'll just position it under our title. So if we click on our button. Uh, you'll notice here we've got several options. This will be where we ha add the interaction later on. But what we want to do right now is we'll, um, we'll drop down the button and we'll change the um, change the text. 
we'll add in our necrotype font and we'll change the text to play there we go awesome make it a bit bigger uh, also make the button size a bit bigger just drag it out a little bit there we go and what we'll do now is we'll change the um, the highlighted color so this is when the mouse goes over it we'll change it to red uh, I'll just show you what that looks like there we go so you see when the mouse hovers over it it goes red that's exactly what we want so that's cool okay so now we want to create an empty game object and what we're going to do is we're going to add the interaction we're going to create a UI controller and can you give, even give this any name I'm going to give mine UI controller so this is going to have a script on it that's going to um, control the uh, interaction so we make a new C sharp script we'll call it UI and we'll open it up and um, I'm, I'm using Mono Develop. but we'll drag that onto our UI controller you can see it's on the game object there uh, so double click it to open it and this is what you'll have by default and uh, so we don't actually need any of this start or update functions we're going to write our own function um, and uh, before we do that we're going to add in um, some uh, libraries that unity uses for scene management so we want to go using unity engine unity engine dot scene management there we are so we'll add that in uh, and then next if we um, might write our own function so public void uh, what should we call it let's call it level to load so that's be the name of the function that'll be important later and then we're going to pass it a string of the name of the level we want to load so we're going to call it level uh, load this there we go drop it down load this level that makes more sense okay curly brace and, and then we're going to use um, the function scene manager dot load level or load scene and we're going to pass it the level that we want to load so we'll write in that um, variable that we popped in there and we are close it off and um, put in a bracket and then close off the main class um, so that's our function to load the level so how do you tell the button to use that function well what you'll do is you'll go to the canvas you'll select the button and you'll scroll down until you see the on click event here we want to add in a new on click event so we hit the plus and we'll have to drag in our UI controller to this none object box here. This is, tells the onclick event what script to use. Uh, and then we need to say what function from that script we want to use to control the button press. So we'll go down to the name of the script, which is UI. And then if you remember what we called our function, it was level to load. So if you find level to load in that list. And then in this box here, we can type in the name of the level we want to load. So I've already created a blank scene, I've called it level 1. So I'll type in level 1 to that box and um, that is absolutely it. It is literally as easy as that. But there's a couple of things you have to do first to in order to tie this all together. We need to make sure that both scenes are in our build settings. So you go to your build settings, you add the menu scene, which uh, we need to save the one we're in at the moment. We'll just call it UI Tutorial. That saves our current scene. And I've also got level 1 in the build as well. So both scenes will need to be in the build settings. So we'll close that down and, and now we'll play it and give it a test. And uh, now we'll click on the button and it loads our level. That's awesome. That's exactly what we want it to do. So we'll go back now uh, and we'll also make a new button or we'll duplicate the old button because that's got most of the work done for us already. And this is going to be our quit button. So we'll drop it down, we'll change the text, or we'll actually, first of all, we'll give it a meaningful name so it'll get confusing with all these buttons going on in the scene. All right, so we we'll call it quit button, we'll change the name of the text to, I don't know, um, what did I call the old one? Run, away, there we are. And now we'll need to um, change the on-click event because at the moment it's going to be using the same function. Um, so if we go ahead and we'll add in a new function that handles the quit, so we'll go public void 
And then if we type in quit, yeah, I'm not very good at my names. I've got to have to get more imaginative. Now we use a good old application dot quit. Now one thing to bear in mind is that this won't work in the editor. So to show you that it's working, we'll put in something called a debug, which is going to write to the console in Unity. So we'll use debug.log, and then we'll um, open a, a speech here. This is what we're going to write to the console so we can see it's working. I'm out of here. So when we know we've seen that message in the console, we know that that function is working and it's being called, and it'll work when we build the project. So to use the console, um, we want to stop our game from um, running full screen so we won't see it, and we'll select our console there. So now we need to change our on-click event because at the moment it's using level to load. We'll go UI and we'll use that function quit. And that's there because we duplicated the play button. So now when we run it, you'll see we click run away and there it goes, I'm out of here. So then we know that function is working and the application will close as normal. Uh, and then the play button also still works as well. Boom! So that's it guys. I really hope you enjoyed the video. Thumbs up if you learned something and if you have any questions, drop them in the comments section below. And until next week, I'll see you in the next one.